Well, we're looking at a piece of white oak right here that we got in Connecticut to make the stern post for Orca. And uh, it's quite a good sized piece. It's nine inches thick. And uh, we're going to end up with it about 12 inches wide. So we're going to rip this side down and take all of this off. This is the outside of the tree, just under the bark right here. This has already been trimmed off. This is the root ball was down here somewhere. So that was like a root coming out there. And, uh, you know, <laughs> we got a fantastic bandsaw here. I, uh, it will actually cut this. It will cut, I don't know, 16 inches deep or something like that. So we're going to make a few 9-inch cuts. We're going to flip it on its edge and make a few 12-inch cuts. Building orca really requires some very special lumber. This is very quarter-sawn. This is like a really nice timber right here. There you go. That's good. This is from one side of the heart. This thing is 40 inches wide. You know, it's like an orchard oak. That's what we're doing with, with orca is putting the most quality lumber that we can get into it. We're going to use the best material we can use. All the wood's going to be the best material you can buy. And uh, all the fastenings are going to be bronze. The bolting's all going to be bronze. And, uh, you know, it is really going to be made to be a very safe and secure boat because I wouldn't even go on it if it wasn't that. <laughs> Look at this saw perform. You know, it, it's just working great. And on Orca, we're going to use it for all kinds of different things. re on, making laminates, progressive bevel sewing. This is a special one because you can do progressive bevel ripping on it, which just means that it's kind of like a table saw. At table level, when you tilt it, it doesn't move away from the fence. So, you know, it's pretty cool like that. And I actually have another one, but this one here gets a workout. I worked on some pretty big projects with this saw right here because when you get involved with laminates, you got a lot of cutting to do. Not just one big cut like this. You got 20 cuts on one piece, you know, so you have to have a saw that performs absolutely perfectly, and this one does it. Now, Orca requires all of those things that I just talked about progressive bevel sawing, laminates, you know, taking and cutting timbers to size, all those things. And uh, this saw is just going to be great. I'm so proud of it. I love it. I just love it. Well, we've brought our piece over and put it up on top of the keel here. This is the piece, obviously, that we're going to take the stern post out of. This piece is a nice vertical grain piece, let's call it that, because the annual rings are going right across it like that, pretty much 90 degrees to the surface. So, uh, you know, it couldn't be much any better than that because, you know, we, we picked this thing special, so... This is really something else. This is your annual rings. You can probably see the medullary rays going straight across 90 degrees to the annual rings. The other thing we're going to do is cut it down to size. It's kind of oversized right now. We're going to cut a strip off of this side, maybe two inches or so, and then we're actually going to cut a piece right off the bottom right here. So it's going to take away most of that turn of grain like that. And, uh, you know, that'll, that'll make it exactly the size that we want it to be. That's what we wanted. That one right there has really got to be a nice piece because it's got the shaft going through it. It takes a little bit of a beating, you know, especially if there's vibration of the prop. It transfers right into this timber first. So you want this thing to be quality, and it is. And uh, the next thing we've done, really, is we disconnected the after section of the keel and put it over in here. And uh, the next thing I'm going to do with that is put a mortise in it, and uh, there's going to be a tenon on this that goes down into the mortise. I'm cutting the mortise first, because if I cut the tenon first, you know, and then I cut the mortise a little bit too big, it'll be sloppy. So it's easier to cut the tenon to the size of the mortise, as far as I'm concerned. So that's the way I'm going to go about that. Look what I did here. I took two spark plug sockets, and I put one on each side of the bar, I had drilled a hole right through the bar, and I got a piece of rod going right through there, and I got them clamp right down on there with the rod. That wasn't an easy hole to drill, I can tell you that, because it's hardened steel, but I got away with it, and uh, we're going to just ram these things right up against a stop when we start cutting. Well, here we go. We're going to make this mortise. Now, this mortise is made so that the stern post can go right down in it. It's 90 degrees to the keel, 90 degrees, which means it's cocked back about a degree and a half because the keel is on a degree and a half angle. Now, I outlined this in red because I'm going to try to cut it with the chainsaw and I don't really want to bump into the red, but if I do, I'll see it disappearing. 
and it's outside actually the pencil line that I drew all the way around. So, you know, I'm trying to cut up to the inside edge of that right here with the chainsaw. And uh, it's got to be the right angle down and all these different things. The first thing I'm going to do actually is drill holes in the corners right here. Four holes right in the corner and then I'm going to use the chainsaw. And this one ends four inches down just like that. And then what will happen is we put the post down in there and bolt right through it. So this being the stern end of the boat, this right here is the position at the stern end of the stern post. The stern end of the boat is six feet beyond that. All right, let's see, I gotta mark this drill bit. I'm gonna make the hole three and five eighths of an inch deep. So I'm just gonna mark it right here with a piece of tape. And I'll wrap that around there. That's my depth gauge. Well, I made this little gizmo here and I'm gonna put it up there like that when I drill the hole. The reason that I'm pre-drilling the corners like this is so that I can get them exactly where I want because if I set this long drill down there and pull the trigger, the hole would come out somewhere else, not right there. So what this jig allows me to do is get the hole nice and straight down. Now, I really only have to start the hole maybe an inch and a half down and then I can just take the jig away because the drill bit's going to go straight down from there. So it, I like cutting the corners out with this little tiny drill bit because it gets way easier to chisel the end of this whole cutout that I'm going to do with the chainsaw. You know, if I used the inch drill bit, then it would have quite a triangle of wood to cut out of that corner and it wouldn't be easy because the pieces don't want to separate while you're chiseling it. This makes it real easy to do once you grab your chisel and do the end of these cuts. But what I'm going to do here now is get them to go nice and straight with the drilling jig, but I've already placed it where I want it. So, you know, I put the jig up there and the drill's basically straight down. The uh, keel on, on Orca has to be done really nice because we're trying to make this boat as strong as possible so we can take passengers and we don't want it to be around for a long, long time. Check out this method I'm using right here for mortising this thing out. Now I'm clamping down this really simple guide system here. It's just a couple hunks of two by four. We're gonna cut the sides first, right down both sides and hopefully not cut the red line away. The way the spark plug sockets are set, you know, that's the depth. Because if I put the saw straight up and down, then it cuts the depth. They also manage the distance because the sockets are rammed up against the end of the two by four. So it can't get carried away no matter what. And I can follow the line. I can concentrate on following the line and not worry about it kicking back. Then we're gonna make a bunch of cuts down the middle right there. And uh, it's nice and easy to go straight because I've got the saw sharpened at 12 degrees rather than 30 or 25. So it doesn't drift around or bang around a lot. And uh, cuts just as good, it seems to me. So once we get all those cuts made, I use the saw to like chew the other pieces out of there. And you can use it to actually grade. It's almost like grading because you're using the end of the saw and passing it sideways. And you know, it makes a nice cut. I wanna make sure I, I do this right. So I'm gonna reverse and do the other end the same way I did that. This whole system right here is very, very rudimentary, but it works really well. So, you know, watch this happen because this is pretty interesting right here. There are machines that do this that they use a lot on, uh, you know, beam houses and barns and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, we don't own one of those. We can't, we can't use one because we don't have one. But this works pretty darn good right here. I don't have to pay a million dollars for a big piece of equipment. This thing right here is just a real simple little battery powered chainsaw. Once I cut out everything that the chainsaw will cut out, the only thing left is the absolute corner. You know, the very corner right in there, I have to use a chisel, you know, a mallet and a chisel to get that very end out. And I, I use a little square, you know, to make all of those holes and all of that stuff so it's nice and 90 degrees to the surface. We're back on the stern post right now. We're marking out our tenon, you know, with a nice little square, nice and neat, because it's gotta be accurate. Basically, after that's done, I just do most of it with a skill saw. Most all of it's done with a skill saw, but it's kinda like the mortise. You can't get the whole thing done with a skill saw. It leaves you a little bit of work at the end of the radius right there. So, you know, it cuts it mostly out. I would have to pick this thing up and put it on the bandsaw 
and fool around with it on the bandsaw. Now, believe me, it wouldn't be anywhere near this easy. The saw moves and uh, the piece just sits still, make it really easy. And uh, I can do all the cuts I want to do. It leaves a tiny bit of work where the skill saw won't get to. You know, I understand that, but I'm just not willing to pick it up and put it up on the bandsaw. Now this technique right here of cutting downhill, it would seem like it wouldn't be easy to do, but it's not bad. Cutting uphill now, that's a little different. I wouldn't want to do that. Or cutting, you know, like horizontally, because that is really difficult. This is the easiest way to make those cuts downhill. Now this is the final cut that I'm going to make with the circular saw on this tenon right here. And I have to set the depth because if I went down into the tenon, you know, it would be like embarrassing. So, you know, we set the depth real accurately on the saw, which is not always easy. And then we put our little guide system across. It's just another little piece of wood. And uh, I'm going to use that to guide my cut. Now I'm finishing up right here with a handsaw. And I'm going to mark the handsaw for depth too, because uh, it's the same situation. I can't go past the depth that I'm trying to go. And, uh, you know, the handsaw takes care of that. And now one of the tricks right here using a handsaw is to get it going straight up and down. You have to stand diagonally to it, because if you stand straight across or you stand at the very end, you know, for some reason, I can't control it like that. But if I stand diagonally, look how nice and straight up and down the saw goes. So I can get very, very close to the end, you know, without damaging the pot that I don't want to go into. That's all right. It's such a deep cut <clears throat> that the teeth kind of load up like they wouldn't do that on a, on a cross cut. But this is a cross cut saw. <laughs> And we're doing a rip with it, so. So I'm just going to finish up my saw cut right here, and I'll get real, real close, and then I'll just knock it off there with a hammer. Check it out. There's our tongue right there, or uh, tenon, really. So it's kind of mortise and tenon. That's the mortise, and this is the tenon. And I'll have to tune it up a little bit. If I carried it over there and tried to put it in there, I'd be off by the tiniest little bit, but not by much. The last thing I have to do right now is to rough out the corner where the skill saw wouldn't reach. And, uh, you know, I score the corner a little bit with a chisel, and then the piece will come flying right out of there, you know. The chisel gets right in the corner. I could use a little rabbit plane, but it doesn't get right in the corner perfectly. This tool right here, a sharp one like this one, works really easy. Well, there is the stern post right there. I've got it in the mortise, but it needs to be fit just a little tiny bit. We're talking about maybe a 30, or not even a 32nd, a 64th of an inch. Just to touch that up, it'll drop right down in there. So that's about 10 minutes work, but the next thing we're going to do is add the horn timber. Now, it's very much like this, except for the tenon's longer and it goes right up through the horn timber. The horn timber will be up about five inches. It's up on a little angle like that. And uh, this one's 90 degrees to the keel, this whole thing, 90 degrees to the keel. But the keel's up one and a half degrees. So what's gonna happen with the horn timber, it's gonna be put in there and this mortise will be on an angle but it's straight through. So actually, because it's straight through, I think it makes it lure way easier because, you know, having to stop at a certain depth, you know, I did it with a chainsaw, but, you know, it's a little bit annoying to tell you the truth. I'd, I'd rather put it right through like this one's going to be. I'd stay with it if I was you because we're going to drop some big pieces together here. You can wiggle it right there, and I see where it's a little tight. That's where it's rocking, right there, right about there. You know, so see that doesn't move right there. It rocks back and forth. So that's I know where to fit it. To get all the pieces on the center line together is pretty satisfying to me. So you know I'm not going to waste any time. I'm going to keep going till that drops in there. And then uh, you know I have to plan out the horn timber and the tenon. Yet you shouldn't see any lines here. So you know we're going to do a little of that, and then we'll be rolling. <laughs>